my name's Shalia and this is my horse Bo. Um, we have come together today and we're going to try and create a little video to show you the process that I use for helping a horse learn to float load. Um, Bo has loaded on a float before, although he hasn't been on one for quite a while. And I haven't really been doing anything with him for quite a while, so I'm hoping that he will show enough resistance or bits that will be useful to you, but also be good enough that I can show the entire process for which we go through. So, first of all, I'll just mention that groundwork is really useful when doing anything like this and if you can teach your horse a little bit of groundwork and get that communication going between you two it is really helpful because that way the understanding is so much better when you go to do something like this and also being able to protect your space a little bit and be safe um, another good thing to do prior to doing something like this especially if your horse is quite fearful around slopes is getting them used to different obstacles because the float is a giant obstacle really it's got something they have to go under something they have to go between something they have to go over and get encapsulated in which is very claustrophobic for some horses um, so if you can get them used to just smaller obstacles and build up that can be really helpful to build their confidence okay well we'll get started pretty good, he didn't rush or anything like that. So now I'm just going to let him have a look at the float. really good and a lot of horses won't be that at that stage where they would just go that far on but you can see even from that little bit that he stepped on then he stepped off and then he stepped in and then he stepped back and that's quite well, a lot of horses will do that and you you will be able to ask them on and then they might step off of their own accord and it might be that they only get one step up there and that um, is okay. I'm not going to force the horse to stay there at this point. I'm just wanting them to build confidence with the float. Get used to it. So if he wants to go towards it, you ask him towards it, that's great. And then if he has to retreat away from it, then that's also great. It's kind of like if I was standing next to a cliff and I was scared of heights, I'd probably, I might get a little bit closer and then I might need to move away to feel better about it. As opposed to having somebody come up behind me and push me closer and closer and force me to stay there would just scare, scare me a whole lot more. That's good, I'll just rub them there. If your horse is really good at that point and he does go on, a good thing that you can test is can I ask him just to step off a little bit and then can I ask him forward a little bit and then can I ask him to step off a few more steps in other words how well can he yield in that situation Is he stiff? Is he getting stuck? 
is he tense? He's actually fairly relaxed by comparison, so that's really good, and that's what we want. Relaxation is key. If your horse is tense, and if you're forcing it, it's, it's usually going to get worse rather than better. So we want our horses to think that this is not a big deal at all. So the next part, the next thing that I would do is I'm going to test it. Can he stay there while things are going on behind him out here? Or noises are happening? Because I need him to feel comfortable in here. Otherwise, if I shut him in too soon and something scares him, he could panic and hurt himself. So I might do things like make some noise up here. I'll move this around. I'll walk back and forth behind him. See, he's moving a little there to look, but he hasn't come out, which is good. If he did want to come out, that's absolutely fine. Can I do this? Make some noise here. Can I make some noise out here? Obviously, I'd start little to start with. If that was those other things bothered him, I'd do a little bit more of that, then I'd go back and rub him. He's come out a little bit, and that's okay. Is that good boy? Just reassure him a little. And what, instead of just sending him straight back on, whoops, I'm going to ask him off. ask him off the ramp slowly because I don't ever want him to think he has to rush off or get scared there. I don't ever want him to slip and hurt himself and blow his confidence. So now I might put him to work out here. And get him moving, doing something. I want him respectful and yielding to me and working but I don't, I'm not necessarily trying to scare him out here or put too much pressure on. I just want him working and thinking and being responsive. So I, I don't do too many straight circles because they can check out a little bit on you when you do that. And then I'll make the float the release. what a good boy he is. If he comes straight back off, that's okay. I'll just repeat that process. So I'll give him a second to settle. Okay. And then I might go back to doing what I was doing, checking things, making noise. I might see even if I could lift this ramp up a little bit and see what he thinks about that. Okay, that's a good point about doing this this way is at this moment he has free choice so he can back out anytime he wants so he's not going to feel trapped at this point so i want him to get really comfortable in there as much as possible before i actually do shut him in he's exploring in there that's good too but he is also feeling like he needs to come out of it that's okay it's good practice for him as well, to load and unload. You can see there's a slight bit of tension in him because he's slightly awkward coming out. And that could be a little bit lack of practice of doing that sort of thing too because he's a X-ray horse so he's mostly been trucked in his life. So he wouldn't have backed out of a float very much. The other great thing about playing with just doing a step or two on and off the float then off the, off the ramp and then a little bit further and then off again is that they do learn to get much better at backing out which is very useful and can help a lot with the confidence also. So that's He 
has gone all the way up, which is really good. A lot of horses don't, and that's okay to start with. They just get a little bit better and a little bit better. use treats in this situation when he's gone up he's done something good so I thought that would um, be very beneficial as long as I'm doing it as a reward not a bribe but he has to be confident and learn to go when I ask him as well not just to get the treat because otherwise if we go out somewhere and there's a lot going on then the treat's not going to do the trick Very careful when you're doing this that if he did get a fright and rush out that you're not standing behind the ramp and get flattened. Another note I'll point out is I am practicing with the front door of the float shut. I do that on purpose with all the horses I teach because I have heard of some very nasty accidents where horses have panicked and gone and tried to go out through there and seriously injured themselves. Even see if I can put it all the way up, and then I'll take it down. So I haven't done it for very long. I'm just slowly getting him used to that. So he felt he, had to, he didn't come out, but he had to back up a little bit. And some horses will just come right out. And that's okay. That just shows he was a little bit concerned about that. So I don't want him to be concerned about any of this at all. he came off the pressure. I try to only do that if I think the horse will go forward. If I think he can't, he's too um, stuck in himself or he's just not thinking about forward at all, I won't ask him to do something I think that he'll say no to or I can't. So 
I need him to, otherwise he might get dull to what I'm asking him and just simply feel too much pressure as well at times. Any time that he started say he wasn't sure and he started pulling back or resisting what I was doing out here, or even if he started doing that on the float, like he wasn't coming off the halter when I asked him to lead up or something like that, I would fix that out here. I would not try to fix that on the float. I would forget about the float because if I try to do two things at once, it would, would be, be just too much pressure, especially if he's quite worried about the float. Forward out here. If he's getting stuck on the ramp, I need to get my forwards out here to propel him up there enough. with him for a sec. He is alright. Being shut in more is that experience. <laughs> so now I'm going to let him out again straight away. I'm going to take the pressure off him by doing that. Just get him used to things incrementally. Careful not to do that part too soon where you actually shut them in though because they can panic and really hurt themselves. I'll wait till he's standing before I undo this. I don't want him pushing on it. Just now if I have him poo. He might stand there while I do this. If he doesn't, he doesn't. But a lot of horses might, might have to wait till they come off like that. I think we'll do that. And then I will take the poo out because I do not want the ramp or the float getting slippery. So I asked him off. He did wait for me there. That is really good. I like them to wait for me. If he unloaded without waiting, then I'd ask him on again. Because I want him to learn to come off when I ask him to, and not get impatient. He's eating, so that shows he's also very relaxed. 
A horse that's too thick can't eat. And because we just finished there with shutting him in, I'm going to ask him back on again. I don't need to work him, he wasn't bad. It's not that I always want to work the horse anyway. It's just something to create more comfort in here. So he went on when I asked him and that's really good. And I could just end my float loading session there. And that's a really good experience for him. And the more I practice this, the better and better he'll get. You might have noticed I do have a feed bin at the front. There is no feed in it at the moment. I don't do that in training. But I do like once he's going on to be able to give him a feed in there. Just to, as an added bonus, another thing to make the float a nice place for him to hang out. So I might do that for a few days in a row, feed them in the float once they're confidently going in there. And then maybe every now and again. I really like how he backed off there. It was nice and calm and you notice he didn't stumble at all. So it's much more relaxed. I like to also just hang out by the float for a minute after I'm done. So we're not just leaving the place where he had all the pressure. He can just chill out a bit. Good boy. Thank you for your time. I hope that was useful to you. Um, and maybe we'll see you again. So this is Jay and I thought we'd try and show a little bit more of that first step with the float loading as Bo was probably a little too good to see too much of that. So I thought hopefully you'll see a bit more with her because it's a really important first part of that confidence building with the float and just allowing them to get used to it and approaching it and then retreating away from it as they get more and more comfortable they get further and further into it. Um, sometimes too these sessions, any part of this might take quite a long time like this first part with building the confidence could take quite a few sessions if the horse is really worried about it. So it doesn't matter how long anything takes as long as the horse is getting more and more confident and that, then you'll know because it'll take less and less time until it takes no time at all eventually. So we'll bring Jay over and see what she thinks of the float. this a while ago and um, before so she does know a little bit what I want so she offered that step there which is really good um, a lot of horses you might ask them for the first step but then you're just going to release and see what happens Sure, as 
just because your horse goes further on or even all the way on once doesn't mean that they're actually confident enough to do that every time in the beginning and that's okay as long as they're trying too much pressure on while we're on the float, but I'll spend with more energy from back there. Like I said, I don't want to scare her at this point, ideally, but I do want her being responsive. So I'll ask for that forward momentum out here. She might only get halfway, or she might even just get a few steps up the ramp. It doesn't really matter at this point, as long as they're trying. And ideally they might get a little bit further each time, but I don't actually expect her to go all the way on at this point. create more pressure out here and get that forwards out here a little bit away from the float to, send, to use that momentum to carry them as far up as a ramp or onto the float as they will go. If I try and put too much pressure on at the float initially, um, they're just going to get overwhelmed by that a lot of the time.
along. And then let, let her rest. Wherever she stops, that's on the ramp or further up, we just let her rest for a bit and settle there. Sometimes it's just them, um, they'll get to a point and they'll, it's a bit of a threshold, and they just need to get their confidence at that point before going any further because it's just a bit too much pressure for them mentally to go any further. I see that, that could be on this part of the ramp, that could be on that part of the ramp, that could be halfway in. But as long as you're just making a little bit of progress eventually and the horse is trying. But that could take a while for some horses, like that might take several sessions.